It is a ghost from the Carboniferous period, an era when giant fern forests covered the land and insects were unbelievably large. Beneath the water, the ocean was a battlefield and Edestus was a warrior with the ultimate weapon. Instead of having multiple rows of sharp teeth in a semicircular jaw like modern sharks, Edestus took a completely different evolutionary path. Its jaw had only two unique rows of teeth, each a bizarre arc of teeth protruding straight out of its mouth, looking as sharp as a pair of death's scissors. What creature would possess such a bizarre jaw? And why did it evolve in a way that defies all biological laws we know? Let's go back in time more than 300 million years to unravel the mystery of Edestus, the predator with scissor teeth. To understand the strangeness of Edestus, we must travel to its world, the Carboniferous period, which lasted from approximately 359 to 299 million years ago. It was a period completely different from today. On land, Earth was covered by vast swamp forests, with ferns growing up to 30 meters tall. The air contained more oxygen, allowing insects and arthropods to grow to enormous sizes, such as dragonflies with wingspans nearly a meter wide but it was beneath the water that the biological arms race was most intense. After the late Devonian extinction event wiped out most of the fearsome placoderm fish, a power vacuum emerged in the marine ecosystem. And the cartilaginous fish, including the ancestors of sharks and rays, rose to fill that void. The Carboniferous period was the golden age of cartilaginous fish, an evolutionary explosion that produced countless bizarre forms and Edestus was one of the most unique products. Fossils of Edestus have been found in many places around the world, from England and Russia to the Midwestern United States, indicating its wide range, primarily in shallow, warm seas. The name coal shark also comes from the fact that its fossils are often discovered in coal-bearing geological strata. Based on fossils, paleontologists estimate that many Edestus species range from two to four meters long. However, the largest species, Edestus heinrichi, could reach a length of over 6.7 metres, 22 feet, comparable to a great white shark today. With this size, Edestus was certainly one of the top predators in its habitat. In terms of appearance, because the skeleton of Edestus was primarily cartilage, it was very difficult to fossilise. Therefore, our understanding of its body is mainly based on inference. Scientists believe that Edestus had a slender, shark-like body designed for agile movement in the water with a powerful caudal fin for propulsion. But all these features pale in comparison to the part that made its name, a bizarre feature that took more than a century for scientists to begin to understand, its scissor-like jaw. When the first fossils of Edestus were discovered in the mid 19th century, they completely baffled scientists. They were unlike anything ever seen, curved, rigid arches with a row of razor sharp teeth. Initially, scientists weren't even sure what part of the animal these were. Some thought they were defensive spines on fins. It took decades of research for paleontologists to reach the astonishing conclusion. These were its jaws. Unlike modern sharks, Edestus's teeth were located on a structure called a tooth whirl. It had two such whirls, one on the upper jaw and one on the lower jaw, right in the middle of its mouth. The strangest thing was the tooth replacement mechanism. In modern sharks, old teeth fall out and are replaced by new teeth from the row behind. But in Edestus, old teeth never fell out. Instead, Eichner, new teeth grew in from the back. They pushed the entire row of old teeth forward. The result was a bizarre structure. The oldest teeth were at the front, protruding from the mouth, while the newest and sharpest teeth were at the back. These two tooth whirls faced each other, forming something that looked exactly like a pair of giant, grotesque scissors. The nickname Scissor Toothed Shark came from this. Scientists once named about 13 species of Edestus, but recent analyses suggest that only about four species are actually valid. The differences between them mainly lie in the curvature of the tooth whirl. Some species had relatively straight whirls, while others were so curved they almost formed a semicircle. 
For many years, the dominant hypothesis was that Adestus used a simple but brutal scissor-like cutting mechanism. It was believed that when its two jaws closed, the two tooth whirls would slide past each other, cleanly severing flesh and bone. This mechanism transformed Adestus from a mere predator into an oceanic executioner, capable of dismembering prey with a single bite. However, this structure also has drawbacks. The protruding jaws could be easily damaged, and being specialised solely for cutting might make it difficult to deal with hard-shelled prey. Nevertheless, the scissor-cut hypothesis has been the most widely accepted explanation for over a century. But as is often the case in paleontology, the story doesn't end there. For decades, the image of Edestus using its jaws like a pair of scissors has been popular, but some details remain controversial. How could such curved jaws cut effectively? These questions simmered until modern technology brought about a revolution. The big breakthrough came from the rediscovery of a special specimen at the Field Museum in Chicago. The specimen, nicknamed Ed Head, was a nearly complete Edestus skull. In 2019, a team of researchers led by Leif Tapanila used CT scanning technology to look through the rock. What they found changed the game. By digitally reconstructing the 3D skull, Tapanila's team simulated Adestus's jaw movements with unprecedented accuracy. Their results showed a more complex mechanism, bite and slice. According to this model, Edestus would close its jaws to clamp down on prey. Then the lower jaw would slide backward, dragging the sharp lower teeth across the prey and cutting it against the stationary upper teeth. It wasn't like scissors, but more like a giant bread slicer where you press the blade in and then pull to cut. This was a completely new hunting mechanism never before recorded in any other animal. But the story doesn't end there. Another school of thought led by researcher Wayne Itano proposed an even bolder hypothesis based on microscopic scratches on fossilized teeth. Itano discovered scratches running perpendicular to the tooth axis, which suggested a completely different type of movement. Itano argued that Edestus did not close its jaws to cut. Instead, it used its two rows of protruding teeth like a pair of daggers. His hypothesis called stab and thrash suggested that Edestus would lunge at its prey and use its entire body strength to violently shake its head up and down. This powerful thrashing movement would cause the two rows of sharp teeth to slash into the prey, creating deep lacerations. Essentially, Edestus turned its entire front body into a weapon. Now we have three competing models, the classic scissor cut, Tapanila's bite and slice, and Itano's stab and thrash. This scientific debate shows just how mysterious Edestus truly is. It's possible that different Edestus species use different strategies. Whatever the truth, it's clear that Edestus is a complex biomechanical masterpiece that we are still trying to decipher. Edestus was not alone in the strange world of ancient cartilaginous fish. It belonged to the order Eugenia Dontiformes, a group famous for its crazy experiments with tooth structures. Its most famous relative is undoubtedly Helicoprion, the spiral toothed shark. Like Edestus, Helicoprion also had a non shedding spiral of teeth, but it concentrated all its teeth into a giant spiral in its lower jaw. Compared to Helicoprion, Edestus's design seems more extreme. Exposing two rows of teeth was a big risk. However, for millions of years, this strategy clearly worked. Edestus was one of the apex predators of its time. So why was this scissor jaw design a unique experiment? Why did no later shark species follow this path? The answer may lie in specialization. Edestus's jaw was an extremely specialized tool very good at cutting soft-bodied prey, but perhaps very poor at handling other types of food. As environments change, highly specialized predators like Edestus are often the most vulnerable. In contrast, the versatile design of modern sharks, 
with multiple rows of replacement teeth allows them to adapt to a wide variety of prey. Edestus, with its uniqueness, ultimately became an evolutionary dead end, a brilliant but short-lived shooting star. Around 307 million years ago, this strange shark disappeared from the fossil record. Notably, its extinction did not coincide with any major mass extinction event. So what brought about its end? The mystery of Edestus' extinction is as complex as the creature itself. One of the most compelling hypotheses involves environmental change. Towards the end of the Carboniferous period, Earth underwent major changes, including a marine regression event when global sea levels dropped significantly. This event caused the shallow coastal waters, Edestus' preferred habitat, to shrink. The loss of this critical habitat may have dealt a fatal blow to their reproductive capacity, causing their numbers to dwindle until they completely disappeared. Another factor could be competition from new, more agile and better adapted predators. These rivals may have taken Edestus' food sources or preyed on its young, slowly pushing the scissor-toothed shark to the brink of extinction. Whatever the exact cause, the disappearance of Edestus marked the end of one of evolution's boldest experiments. The ocean scissor blade was finally dulled, not by a battle, but by the constant changes of the planet itself. What do you think about Edestus? Which predation hypothesis? Scissors, bite and slice, or stab and thrash? Do you find most convincing? Leave us a comment and let us know. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next adventures back to the past. Thanks for watching.